Hello, I'm Chris Williams. I blog from Cardiff in the United Kingdom on a daily basis, and this is my video blog for Thursday the 30th of September 2010. In the blog I posted yesterday, I dropped an atomic bomb on Cardiff. Shall I do that again today? <laughs> I thought that was hilarious the first time, but of course, no, uh, no point me dropping an atomic bomb on any other place, because it's only kind of that I blog from. Right, so yes, the uh, name of today's video, uh, Another Disability Having Discrimination, ADHD. But on the news today, that uh, scientists just down the road from me here in kind of have determined that there is a genetic link to ADHD. Now, I have Asperger's Syndrome myself, and I've encountered loads of people saying, our oh, Asperger's Syndrome doesn't exist. Indeed, in the old days, people said that autism in general was uh, the parents' fault. And it was on the radio today that loads of people are sceptical about uh, this genetic link with uh, uh, ADHD. They're saying, ah, oh, the research is nonsense, the parents are to blame. Well, I think that's very insulting comments from these people who clearly haven't met anyone with ADHD. ADHD, of course, is on, uh, no, there's an autism spectrum, and the books I've got that have helped me with my Asperger's Syndrome, they mention that you know, there are overlaps with ADHD and other uh, similar conditions. So, uh, I like to think that ADHD does exist. I know that uh, Ritalin is uh, given to people with ADHD, and um, I, I, I think that, uh, no, I, I don't know uh, anyone myself with ADHD, but uh, I'm not too keen on uh, the use of medicine to uh, uh, adjust the effects of such uh, disorders. Like, if someone said to me, oh, Asperger's Syndrome, here's some medication to make you more sociable and more confident with your communication, no, uh, that, that's just going to be false. No, it's like, it's like going to be, uh, it's going to be like getting drunk, no, you, you're, one moment you've got the Asperger's, and you get drunk, and uh, you're a completely different person, and then it wears off, and then you're back to how you were prison. Like, um, I'm not too keen on the... Uh, brain changing mechanisms and of course I'm sure as you know if you have ADHD or if you are someone who is uh, associated with someone who's got ADHD the medication will wear off and then the problem will then come back it's a, it's a lifelong problem that people just have to put up with and I think it's disgusting that these people who say the ADHD doesn't exist they, they, they've got an agenda against the people who suffer from from it. Of course, I know myself with my Asperger's and people say to me, they, they don't want to be my friend because they think I'm strange and weird. Of course, but I say to them, it's the Asperger's and they say Asperger's syndrome doesn't exist. I imagine the same is true for people with ADHD. They could say, excuse my behaviour because I have ADHD. And the people who they speak to will say, ah, oh, that's an excuse. Uh, take responsibility for what you do. That's of course. And, uh, I think that's disability discrimination, and, uh, I, can I get to it? Yeah, um, I've been, uh, I've been reading a lot recently about the disability discrimination I've been subject to over my, uh, Asperger's, and i got this book here, Autism, Discrimination, and the Law, and uh, I was speaking to my solicitor yesterday, actually, and uh, he says that you can only really declare discrimination against people who are service providers. If, an, if a member of the public says to you, ah, oh, 
your ADHD doesn't exist, then that's going to cause you distress. And then you can prosecute them under the Harassment, Alarm and Distress legislation here in the United Kingdom. I don't know what the procedures are for uh, other uh, Western world countries, like English speaking in particular. But uh, I thought we should all join together and s uh, clamp down on disability discrimination, whether it's in terms of Asperger's syndrome or in terms of ADHD. Uh, I know that uh, with, with dyslexia, there's still people who say things like, Ah, just read it! And the person says, I don't know how to read it. Because the person will say, Ah, you're thick! Just read it! That's sort of good. No. Uh, I know that uh, it was... Uh, I've seen some documentaries, actually, that... Uh, in the doc uh, old documentaries. Uh, they showed the uh, person with the uh, neurological condition. And they were shaken by the person in the uh, hospital who was sort of uh, seen to them, like... Um, I saw a documentary that had this uh, person who was m mute, and uh, the uh, the uh, the person who they visited in the hospital uh, said, "Speak," and the person who's mute said, mm, mm, "And the person in the hospital said, "Speak, child, speak," and sort of shaking the child, and the child's going, "Hmm, hmm," and the person in the hospital is saying, "Don't say hmm, say hello," and the child kept on saying, "Hmm." Hmm. I think this. I was thinking this is child abuse. You can't force someone to do something that they cannot do. But in the old days, United Kingdom, that was standard procedure. You know, the medical people said, "Snap out of it! You're pretending. You're putting it on. Your traits are strange. There's nothing medically wrong with you." They said in the old days. Of course, now, thanks to Cardiff University and other such research establishments like Oxford University and King's College London, uh, you can now come out of the shadows and say officially that you have something wrong with you. I don't think that uh, medication is the way forward. Brain surgery, not the way forward either. I understand that with, asp with my Asperger's syndrome, a lobotomy could do something to it, but uh, it's more like the lobotomy would make me even worse, it might then make me full on paralysed. So, I have to be left as I am, and people have to like me as I am, and if they don't like me as I am, then I can prosecute them under the law. And the same is true for those of you with ADHD, dyslexia, and other conditions where people might say, you're putting it on, or just behave normally, that sort of thing. Uh, because, of course, uh, y you're behaving uh, in the way that is natural to you, and uh, people who can't accept you for the way you are uh, should be ignored, because I know myself that uh, if you want employment or friends, it seems that you're in a minority, and hence depression, something that I suffer from, is uh, bound to be something that you will experience during the course of your life. Because a lot of people commit suicide because of the intolerance of others. But, as I say, I think that uh, the world should unite to uh, abolish discrimination. But, as I say, my solicitor says that you have to be careful with what word you use it. It's only discrimination if it's a service provider being nasty to you. If it's a member of the public being nasty to you, they're causing you alarm and distress and here in the United Kingdom you can prosecute them under the harassment legislation. And of course you only need two pieces of evidence to prove that they have caused you alarm and distress for such a prosecution to be achieved. Okay, that's all I want to say about that. And may I encourage you to visit my written blog, Musings of There's a lot of good material on there at the moment. If you go there now and look under the 30th of September 2010 section, you'll see my comments about Nigel Stepney, the former Ferrari uh, engineer who has recently been punished by the Italian courts. you also see the link to a hilarious blog written by a police inspector here in the United Kingdom. And you'll also see what I uh, thought about the posh guy in room number one here in this house of multiple occupancy, but he's got the biggest house He's got the biggest room in the house, but he said it's too small for him. 
Okay, thanks for your time, and I hope you join for my next video blog. Until next time, it's bye for now. Bye bye.